Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Hey, good morning to you from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope your October is off to a great start. <laughs> it is the first. Here we are as the year rolls on. And now at 630, two struggling Fayette County schools are showing signs of improvement. We'll break down new statewide test scores that have just been released this morning. Police say a Southern Kentucky woman kept her dead boyfriend in a freezer for weeks. We have a few showers laying out there once again this morning. And then as we look towards your weekend, yeah, we're going to be focusing in on Hurricane Joaquin. How is that going to impact our plans there for Friday off towards your weekend? I'll get right into that coming up. And leading our news on WKYT, statewide test results for schools in the Commonwealth were released overnight. And there's some good news for Fayette County schools, but the leaders there still know there's a little bit of room for improvement, of course. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain live at Central Office to show us how Fayette County schools are doing. Yeah, Rebecca, the two schools showing the most improvement are William Wells Brown Elementary and Bryan Station High School. Now, Bryan Station High School is no longer considered a persistently low achieving school after four years of having academic gains. But however, Bryan Station did have the 17th lowest high school scores in the state. As for William Wells Brown, it had the largest score increase after being the lowest performing school in the state last year. Getting low scores last year, but Principal Jay Jones says the school was determined to improve. And we were kind of wallowing in our sorrow for a while, to be honest, but we had to get ourselves together and focus on the kids. One thing we didn't want to do is sit around and glorify the problems, because we know what those are, but um, we had to focus on getting systems in place to help our kids be successful, and that's exactly what we did. As a whole, Fayette County schools showed an overall improvement over last year's scores. More than 70% of schools in the district saw score increases. In all, Fayette County schools are now proficient as a district, no longer a needs improvement district as it was last year. The overall score is up 2.1 points from last year. Henry Clay and Lafayette High Schools were named distinguished, and SCAPA was deemed a national blue ribbon school, meaning it demonstrates that all students can achieve high levels. Here's what Fayette County Public Schools consultant Marlene Helm had to say about this year's test results. This year's scores give us, I'm happy to report, many reasons to celebrate. They also give us the opportunity to recognize that we still have work to do. Our sleeves are rolled up. Our focus is laser sharp. And we are determined to seize this opportunity to continue to make the improvements that we know need to occur. Overall, the district's rating against others in the state is now in the 82nd percentile. And I know this is a lot of information. If you want to find out more information or see how your kids' school performed in the test scores, just go to our website, WKYT.com. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. All right, thanks, Michelle. We also had a chance to go through some scores for other school districts surrounding Fayette County. Bourbon, Clark, Jessamine, Madison, and Scott counties all scored in the proficient category. But students in Woodford County also have a big reason to celebrate. That school district ranked as distinguished. You can find out how your particular school district did by checking out WKYT. And all the latest news and weather, of course, is for you right there. Now, new this morning on WKYT, a second person has been arrested in connection to a Clay County child abuse case. Bobby Barger is charged with assault. Police say a six-year-old showed up in school in Manchester with bruises all over her body. Police have also arrested the child's mother, Jessica Sasser. They say she claimed the child fell on the playground, but police say the injuries don't match that story. New this morning, two Central Kentucky parents are in jail accused of abusing a two-month-old child. Brian Ray and Jocelyn Miles are charged with criminal abuse. Doctors say the baby had a brain injury as well as broken wrists and broken ribs. They say some of the injuries were older than others. Miles told police that Ray was the one who hurt the baby. The funeral is today for the 19-year-old son of country music singer Eddie Montgomery. Hunter Montgomery died Sunday at UK Hospital. The Fayette County Coroner says his death is under investigation pending toxicology report results. His visitation starts at 11 o'clock today at Southland Christian Church on Harrodsburg Road, followed by his funeral 
at 3 o'clock. We have some new details this morning on the death investigation of a teenager in Greenup County. Maddie Conley's family and friends are demanding that James Ratliff and his 17 year old girlfriend be held accountable. Ratliff told police that Conley jumped from a moving ATV when his girlfriend started chasing them. But investigators say his story and the evidence don't match up. He took my daughter from me. I'll never get her back. He took her mommy. You know, and it's not fair. And he even just walked the streets. And then I had not act like nothing in the world's ever happened. I went and ate and moved her car. It's not fair. And I think that it, he's just as responsible as the juvenile is. Ratliff's bond was raised. His case has been sent to the grand jury. Well, today is the day retailers in the U.S. are supposed to have installed credit card terminals designed to protect data breaches. A lot of people are going to miss the yeah. deadline, though. It's estimated about half of the businesses in the U.S. have them. And if you don't have your new chip card in hand yet, you're not alone either. WKYT's Victor Puente is live now to explain what you need to know about this system and where things stand. Victor, good morning. 74% of the viewers who took our online poll said they don't have one of those chipped credit cards yet. And whether shoppers are ready or not, retailers were supposed to be ready today to accept those cards. Now, the microchipped credit cards are supposed to protect shoppers. October 1st is the day retailers are required to have new credit card readers in place, like the ones here at Target that accept cards with microchips. Those chipped cards have an added layer of security to them. They use a microchip instead of a ma magnetic strip. That creates a unique number for each transaction. Now, stores have a big incentive, incentive to make that change. Any that don't switch by today will be liable for fraudulent charges. If your cards aren't chipped, you'll still be able to use them with those readers, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, banks have told us they've been rolling out those chipped credit cards to their customers in phases. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. All right, Victor, thank you very much out there in the rain this morning. Well, a man is recovering this morning after a fire and explosion at his home. Investigators in Jackson County are not sure what caused the home on Morrill Kirby Knob Road to explode. Some of the man's neighbors are being called heroes after funneling into the collapsing home and finding him. We're told that the man is now in fair condition at UK Hospital. Still no arrests this morning in a shooting near downtown Lexington. Police say the victim was shot twice outside Griffith's Market on East 6th Street. The victim drove to a relative's home on nearby Chestnut Street for help, crashing into some cars along the way. Police say the suspect's getaway car has been reported stolen. Well, weeks after a man died, police found his body stuffed in a freezer in Pulaski County. The sheriff's office says 68-year-old Gary Jenks was reported missing earlier this week. A body was found in a freezer at his home on Happy Ridge Road, but it hasn't been officially identified. Jenks' girlfriend, Teresa Owens, is charged with evidence tampering and abuse of a corpse. Deputies say she poured lye and fertilizer over the body to mask the smell. The time this morning is 6.38 on WKYT. Kentucky's general election is just over a month away, and a new poll shows a tight race for governor. The latest WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll has Democrat Jack Conway leading at 42 percent. But Republican Matt Bevin is close second at 37 percent. Independent Drew Curtis sits at 7 percent. All three candidates are down one percentage point from our July poll. 15 percent of those surveyed say they are still undecided. Now tonight at 6, the Bluegrass Poll will be asking voters if Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis should be required to issue marriage licenses. And is that issue a factor in the governor's race? You can see all of the results from the latest Bluegrass Poll at WKYT.com. Well, while Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis continues to make headlines, she's not the only Kentucky clerk refusing to issue marriage licenses. Kay Schwartz is the county clerk in Whitley County. She says unlike Davis and Casey County Clerk Casey Davis, she is still issuing marriage licenses to heterosexual couples, just not same-sex couples. All three clerks stopped issuing licenses after the U.S. Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage in June. In a statement, the ACLU said that Schwartz is blatantly violating the law and that that organization will closely monitor the situation. Well, after days spent camping out for Blue Blue Manus tickets, UK says Tent City, as it's called, <laughs> is at capacity. And camping in the rain yeah. this morning. Despite the rain, fans tell us it is worth that soggy wait. WKYT caught up with two fans, including 76.
26-year-old Ramona Adkins, known as Granny Wildcat. She says even a heart attack at a basketball game a few years ago couldn't stop her from asking the score as she was in a hospital bed recovering. Twelve years later now, she is in line camping out this morning for tickets. Those tickets will be handed out Friday night. Big Blue Madness is coming up on October 16th. So, a lot of excited fans. Lots of stories over there when you go oh, uh, talk with them. Oh, I bet them. so many stories yeah. over there for sure. Kind of like, oh, that poor woman having a heart attack. But she said she wanted to still know what the score of the game was. That was still what she was concerned with. Interested in the cats, right? Yeah. All right, uh, 641 right now. And it's time to check live drive traffic this morning, see how things are moving along. We do know that rain is a factor out there this morning, and that will be an issue. So, obviously, as we uh, take a look now downtown, uh, you can see that uh, Vine and Upper Streets are covered with rain, and folks are using those wipers to move along. You're going to need some extra time. You know, time. it can be a bit of a treacherous driving situation, but doesn't it look really pretty right there? With the reflection of the lights, it almost gets you in the mood for, dare we say, at Christmas time. <laughs> Ooh, it was early. That's for what that. it reminded Although, me. Although you know, I guess being October first. Uh, yeah, it's that time. Slowly rolling into it. Oh right? yeah. Okay. More news coming up on WKYT on your Thursday morning, and we're glad you're along with us. A newlywed couple in Minnesota getting a lot of heat. They sent a bill to relatives who couldn't go to their wedding last minute. We'll have much more on this after weather. And the front that moved through that's over toward the eastern seaboard at this very moment is going to be a major factor in what Hurricane Joaquin actually does. I'll explain that and show you how that's going to affect our plans for the weekend. Coming up.